Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, and today we'll be reviewing the PNSO Dinosaur Museum, Amen the Spinosaurus. This was my most anticipated PNSO 2023 model, as you guys know, Spinosaurus is my second favorite dinosaur behind Tyrannosaurus. Now, a new PNSO Spinosaurus was expected, since their first one was done in like 2020, and it was pretty small with some oversized scales. Plus, a paper that came out in December 2022 uh, changed the physical appearance of Spinosaurus once again. The animal actually had longer hind limbs, the sail, it was more straight on the top, there was no dip, and the gap between the back of the sail and the front of the tail fin was not as visible. But knowing how much Spinosaurus changes, I wouldn't be surprised if there is another study in a few years that will make this model outdated. But by looking at this, well actually I've had this for over a month, and I absolutely love it. I, I can confidently say that this is going to be uh, definitely in my top 5 all time favorite PNSO models. So without further ado, let's dive in and see what this new figure has to offer. You get two accessories. One is of course the acrylic stand to help it balance in case it warps over time. The second one is this neat looking Spinosaurus skull. I really like how this is sculpted. You can see all the conical teeth, the tooth notches, the skull openings, though I would have preferred a prehistoric fish accessory, something like an Onchopristus or a Mawsonia. Time for some quick measurements. For height, Eamon is about 6 inches tall at the top of his head, and from head to tail, he's about a foot long. Along the curve, he would be 12.8 inches long. So Spinosaurus was estimated to be around 14 meters in real life, so this would be in the 143 scale range. A disappointment for those who've been waiting for a 135 scale Spinosaurus. Starting off with the head, PNSO never fails to deliver amazing accurate head sculpts. I mean just look at this beautiful Spinosaurus head sculpt. It captures all of the well known features of this animal, like the tooth notch, the conical teeth, and the and the crest on the head. This time the crest is more of a rectangular shape rather than the typical triangle shaped crest. And looking at those teeth, like I've said before, they are cone shaped, perfect for catching slippery fish. And some teeth are larger than the others, like the ones on the back of the notch and the ones on the tip of the lower jaw. Now despite many of PNSO's recent theropods like the Sorophaginax having lips, this one doesn't, but I guess it's oh, it's okay because lip spinosaurids isn't widely accepted yet. Now moving down the model, the scalation is such an improvement over the 2020 Spinosaurus. Not only do you got these little osteoderms, but like the smaller scales, the skin folds, it just looks like real reptile skin. Because the thick scales on the previous Spino, as well as the Winter Wheels and T-Rex, it just didn't look natural. Like I said before, the scales were too large and exaggerated. Now the scales get a thicker around the arm and the chest area. Just look at those beefy arms, hooked with that awesome looking um, thumb claw. And then moving down to the underbelly. Uh, the scales on the underbelly do look a little crocodilian like, and that's another thing I appreciate about this model. There is no obvious crocodilian stylizations. I think giving crocodile features to Spinosaurus has been overdone at this point. So I'm glad that this figure doesn't have too many of those stylizations. Moving up to the sail, wonderful detailing uh, with the, um, the scalation and the outlines of the vertebra. And like I said before, uh, there is no dip, the top of the sail is straighter. The legs are also muscular as well, though proportionally smaller. If you look closely at the feet, the scales are not that visible, and they are webbed. Down to the tail, the base is very thick, but as you go down, it gets uh, it gets flatter to help it swim through the water. And the tail fin looks very neat as well. I like how eel-like it looks. Moving on to the paint job, I'm glad that this figure retains the amazing color scheme from Essien. The colors consist of a light tan as the main color, and a dark brown striping that starts at the back of the head and goes all the way down the tail. There's also some orange highlights on uh, near the striping and on the sail as well. A very natural and appealing coloration. I really enjoy the pose of this as well. The animal is rearing up on its hind legs as if it's intimidating a rival, probably a Carcharodontosaurus or another Spinosaurus. Starting off with our comparisons, here is the 2020 PNSO Spinosaurus, which is outdated and a lot smaller. While the head sculpts and paint job remain mostly the same, you can see a considerable difference in the detailing. 
uh, see the older one has the thick, exaggerated crocodilian-like scales, while this one has the more realistic-looking leathery scales. Let's bring in some other Spinosaurus figures, so we've got the one from Safari LTD and Collecte. Now, these three are based off the 2020 study. These next three are based off the 2014 study. So we've got the Schleich Spinosaurus, the 2019 Safari LTD model, and the very big Papo Spinosaurus. Here we have the 2009 Carnegie Spinosaurus, and it's pretty clear that this theropod has changed a lot over the years. Lastly for Spinosauruses, let's bring in the Nanmu figure to show the massive differences between the real animal and the movie monster. Now let's bring in some other PNSO theropods. So we've got the wonderful Sucomimus and the Sinopliosaurus, which is technically Siamosaurus. Next we have the Carcharodontosaurus, which also has the problem of being undersized. And I think these two scale very well with each other. Spinosaurus did indeed coexist with this carnosaur. Speaking of carnosaurs, here is the PNSO Giganotosaurus, the second version, the Mapusaurus, and the beautiful Meraxis. Here is the Yangchuanosaurus Magnus and the Sorophaganax. Of course, we gotta compare a Spinosaurus with a T-Rex, so let's bring in the PNSO Cameron the Tyrannosaurus, and you can clearly see that Cameron is a lot beefier, especially when you view them from the top. And I think it's a matter of time before PNSO makes a lip T-Rex. Here's two more Spinosaurids, the Howlingood Baryonyx, and the Collecte Ceratosuchops. Here is the Beast of the Mesozoic 135 scale Tyrannosaurus, and these two scale quite nicely with each other. Here's a quick comparison of the Spinosaurus skull with the T-Rex and Triceratops skulls. Last but not least, here is the Collecte Xyphactinus and Mini Xyphactinus. Well, there you have it guys. That was my review on the PNSO Dinosaur Museum, Amen the Spinosaurus. I thought that the Sorophaganax was going to be my favorite PNSO release for last year, but I have to give it to this guy. The overall model is just gorgeous. It has amazing detailing and a superb paint job. The skull accessory is also a lovely addition. For now, this is the definitive Spinosaurus in my opinion, unless the Rebore one turns out to be better. So my final rating is going to be a 9.5 out of 10. It's so so close to getting a 10 out of 10. My only issue is the size. I just wish it was bigger so we can finally have a 135 scale Spinosaurus. So if you guys enjoyed this review, leave a comment down below, like and subscribe, it really supports my channel. And I will see you all in the next video, which will be on the Beast of the Mesozoic Albertosaurus.